everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We're going to talk about file control and revision control. Now in the industry that I work in, tracking, revision control, file control is very critical. You need traceability. So I'm going to ask a few questions and you can answer these uh, in your head and see if you have good control over your files. Specifically, the G code files that are used to directly generate your parts. So do you know what revision and what 3D model was used to generate a G file on your machine? Do you know when that G file was generated? Do you know what post-processor was used to generate that G file? Do you know what machine it's specifically targeted for if you're using multiple post-processors? All of these questions can lead to issues of traceability, part errors, human errors, mistakes, making the wrong part by accident, and if you don't have good answers for these questions, then we need to look at how to improve that system so that we know when you load a file on a machine, it's the file you want, it's the recent one, and you're going to make the part you expect. So let's look at our post-processor again in Fusion 360, and let's look at an output file from the standard FANUC post-processor that we've been using uh, for a lot of these demonstrations. So here we have our standard test part that we've been using and we have the standard post from the default FANUC post processor. And at the top of the file this is really what we're interested in. It's got a program number and then it's got a comment. It does tell you some tooling information, so at least you know how many tools the file is going to use and what tools that it's going to use in which places, so that's good. But other than that, there's no information here to answer the questions that we posed at the beginning. How do we know when it was generated? How do we know what rev of file from the 3D model made it? How do we know that it is the, the rev and revision of the file that we use to generate the last 50 parts? Right? So these are all the questions that we'd like to have answered easily. Another thing is the tool data is there, but what about work offsets? Which work offsets is this file going to call and use? By modifying our post-processor slightly and adding some more code into it, we can add more header information into all of our G-code files that get generated so that we can maintain traceability and revision control of our G-code files. When the files are on the machine, we'll know exactly what we're running. So let's look at how, uh, how to do this. So in the FANUC post-processor, you can recall that we've got some user-defined properties up at the top. And then that also has some properties called write machine and write tools. Okay, If we go down into the post-processor in the uh, on open function, so let's look for the on open function. Probably helps if I set my language. There we go. Okay, so here's on open. Now on open recall gets called first, so we know that that is going to control the header. So we got a whole bunch of stuff in here, and then we come across a section that calls dump machine configuration. Now this specifically is used more in HSM. 
because they have a machine configuration methodology that allows you to fill in this information of vendor model description. If you're just using this post processor for one machine, you can easily hard code these items by just using the quotes and then typing in what you want outputted. Or, like in some of our other videos, you could make these user properties that then you could enter in or select from on the Fusion property screen. So this will allow you to enter in some information on the machine if you so choose. Then the next section is the tool dump. So this section of code from here to here generates that tooling information, which is this. And this first section, this is what's getting the Z ranges. So it'll give you the minimum Z depth of each tool. And then this section here goes out and gets all the tool information and then also lists the minimum Z depth that was previously found up here. So what else is there? What can we add here? I did a lot of digging and I found some really good stuff that you can add to this section of the code right here. I'm just going to copy and paste it over uh, because it's fairly complex and there's a lot of variables in it. And I'll show you what it does. So we'll put this in here. So we'll do it after our machine dump. So this will, because it's after the machine dump and after the machine write, this will always write into the file no matter what we have the property set up above. And what it's going to do is it's going to get the post processor description. So that will give you the software version of the CAM processor used to generate the file. So that's your revision of Fusion 360 that you used. It will get you the file name of the model that was used. So that's here. It's going to give you a date that it was generated on. And then there's two checksums that are available that you can get. And those checksums are what gives you the best traceability. So you can pause the video and then copy this down. I'll uh, put these blocks in the video description below as well so that you can copy and paste them easier. So let's save this and then let's reprocess our uh, part here and then see how the output changes. So we'll go, we'll post process. We'll reload. So now we added a post processor. It couldn't find a field for that. Here's the file. So we have file name is letter test version 4. So that's this. Then we have a time and date that it was generated on. Then here is the post processor revision that was actually used. So this is tied to your Fusion 360 revision. You have a configuration checksum and then you have an intermediate checksum. And these two numbers give you the most control. So watch what happens when I simply just repost process this again. Now when I update the file, notice this number won't change, but this lower number will change. Okay. So this intermediate checksum here, that is tied to an instance of the post processor for this file. So anytime that you go and repost a file, even if it's on the same revision of model, so even if this revision number is the same, this checksum will always change. So you can always tell if you've reposted this file or not. So if you write this number down and then compare it 
with the number that's in the machine file, you'll be able to tell if you have the right file. So what about this configuration checksum up here? What that is, is that is the checksum of your post processor. So if we go back over to the post processor and we simply change it, we'll just add a comment to it and save it. Okay, so now we ended in A26. So now let's repost. Okay, so now notice this number changed and this number changed. Okay, now here's the really cool part. If we go back and we change the file back to what it was originally and repost, notice this number went back to the original number that it was. So this is the checksum of the actual post processor file that was used. So it gives you control over not only knowing that you have the correct G code file, but it also gives you tracking on what revision of post processor was used to generate this G code file. So this is very important information if you have any type of revision control or tracking control requirements from your customer. You can definitely tell them, yes, I use this file. And then if they ask you to make more parts for them, you can reference back to this number again and make sure that you're using the exact same file today that you used on the last run. So that adds a nice amount of tracking to your files. Now the tool data is there and I've found that this tool data is in almost all the post processors but what about work offsets? It's nice to have tool data but it would also be nice if we could know which work offsets to use. So we can solve that issue as well. So let's go below the tool information and we'll add in a section here So there's the section for work offsets. So what this will do is it will go through all of the operations in the file, in your, in your model file, these guys, and then see what work offsets they're using. And it will tell you all the different work offsets that are used during this run. Okay. Now what I also did is I also added an additional property just like with the machine data and the tool data to allow the operator to select whether they want that data output. So there's the new property that I added to allow you to turn this on and off. So let's save this and then let's post our file again. Let's see what we get this time. So now we get a section, work offsets, and it's telling us this part is going to use uh, the work offset one. Okay, so that's a nice little piece of information to know which work offsets you have to do. Now if we were to take this setup and duplicate it, and then edit it, and say use work offset 2 and call this op2 and then we'll post process the whole entire thing in one file Now you can see it has, we're using work offset one and we're using work offset number two. So this is nice to know which work offsets that these files are using. So by adding this little tiny bit of code to our post processor, we can give ourselves much better information in the header 
to get better tracking and revision control of our files. So I'll post this information, uh, I'll put the code snippets that you can add to your post processors uh, in the description below, so you can copy and paste it if, you, if you'd like to. Uh, if you have any questions on anything or you want to see any tips on post processors, uh, feel free to comment below or send me an email. I hope this is helpful and we'll see you on the next video.